So there is another um, video showcasing one of our campuses. Um, I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about um, a few of our um, programs at the university. Um, first, our selective programs for high achieving students. Um, and uh, our flagship program is the Macaulay Honors College, which is available uh, or has eight partner colleges um, within the system. It is a program that, as I describe it, um, it provides a student with kind of dual citizenship. They are a member of their home campus, whether it be Hunter, Baruch, City, Queens, Brooklyn, College of Staten Island, John Jay or Lehman, and also they're a member of the Macaulay um, family. And uh, this really gives students a really good sense of, again, what's available at an individual campus, but also working with students like themselves across the system. Uh, a few of the advantages of Macaulay is one, uh, students uh, who are eligible for in-state tuition do get a full tuition scholarship over four years. Um, there is an opportunity to apply for a grant um, totaling up to $7,500 over the course of their four-year experience, which students often use for study abroad or for internship opportunities outside of New York. It also really has a very close, tight-knit community um, so that we work with our students from the moment they arrive on our campuses to start working in terms of what they're going to be doing once they finish their degree. And uh, when we have our Macaulay students talk to their colleagues and friends who might be at um, other selective institutions across the country, the number one advantage that they feel in addition to, again, to a wonderful academic experience is that they graduate with a bachelor's degree debt-free. So um, I would encourage you to explore uh, the options available at Macaulay. I do know that uh, there will be a Macaulay session later in this program, so uh, please take a look at, at Macaulay as a viable option. Uh, we also have um, a couple of other programs, so let me talk about the combined BAMD program at Brooklyn College, uh, which is a kind of a traditional pre-med program that works with students as they come in uh, who are interested in medical school as one of their different options. And uh, there's a really close advising component to this program that works with students as they navigate their undergraduate career with the focus of medical school. Um, our students have an opportunity to also do some work and research with uh, medical school faculty at SUNY Downstate. Um, the City College of New York is home to both our School of Architecture, the Bernard and Ann Spitzer School of Architecture, and the Grove School of Engineering. Uh, two programs that are only available within um, at, at City College and uh, these programs are well uh, regarded not just in the US but across the country uh, so it, again if you're interested in either engineering the full range of engineering programs or in architecture I would encourage you to explore um, City College and its offerings in addition to these programs we also have a wide range of what we call local or campus-based honors programs. So there are some students who are high achieving students but would rather have an individual college experience and not be part of a university uh, group. So they, are, uh, they have the option to do that within our campus-based honors program. So I would encourage you again to um, look at those programs and many of them also offer uh, merit-based scholarships. And just to chime in, those programs are offered both at our four-year and two-year colleges. At our community colleges, we offer the honors programs as well. Thank you, Claire. So speaking, um, again, about different options available at, uh, at CUNY, let me share a little bit about our opportunity programs. And uh, these are programs similar to what's available at SUNY and at the private sector. At CUNY, we call them SEEK at our four-year colleges and College Discovery in our two-year colleges. And these are programs designed for students who um, are ready to go to college, but for whatever reason have not been able to demonstrate um, with their academic work that they are kind of um, close to the general admission guidelines. So we do provide an opportunity for them to enter our colleges, again, seek at our four-year colleges and college discovery at our two-year colleges. And we do provide for them um, a lot of academic support, financial support, to make sure that not only do they complete their credentials um, at, at a two-year or four-year school, but also that they're well poised to move on to then graduate school. Uh, and it is a, a way in which students can work within a much smaller community at our individual colleges and get that support um, that they need. 
In addition, because of the, the need that we've seen in New York, um, the university about four years ago created a, another opportunity program that's available at six of our seven community colleges called the Accelerated Study in Associates Program, short for, uh, or also known as ASAP. And this was a program designed to help our students entering our community colleges to be successful in their endeavors. Um, at the national level, we know that the graduation rate for our community colleges um, is rather low. So we were trying to figure out a way to encourage students not only to enter college, but also to be successful in completing their credential and moving on to a four-year degree. So uh, we created ASAP with uh, help from uh, New York City government, and uh, we have been able to move our graduation rates from um, teen numbers um, in, in six years to over 55% in three years. So it is a program that has been successful in getting students to meet their academic goals. Uh, it provides small classes, mandatory academic advising. Uh, students are admitted in a cohort, so they are with their colleagues through their two or three years in a community college. Uh, and we also try and provide additional financial support for our students through the ASAP program. So I would encourage you to look at all the different options available. Uh, and later on, I'll be talking about how do you apply for all these wonderful programs. So often people are familiar with our wonderful campuses, our great facilities, our amazing academic programs, and don't know as much about our student life. So although you've seen a little bit about it in both the Queens and Baruch video that we've shown so far, I wanted to give you a bit of an overview of what student life really looks like at CUNY. So to start with athletics, um, generally our colleges participate in Division Three athletics. Uh, which is very competitive, but I think the real benefit of that is that our students who participate uh, think of themselves as student athletes and often say it's important that the word student comes first. So they get a lot of great academic support and they support each other um, to their academic goals as well as being really competitive athletes who get to utilize the facilities around the city of New York. So what's really kind of fun I think for a lot of our student athletes is that um, because of our location again um, they get to play in places that you wouldn't necessarily otherwise have access to so for instance um, we play some of our baseball championships games at MCU Park which is the minor league park where the Brooklyn Cyclones play um, we do our track and field events at Icon Stadium on, um, which is a state-of-the-art track and field facility in the city of New York um, and our tennis championships are held at the U.S. Um, tennis Association National Tennis Center, um, which is where the U.S. Open is played. So um, our students are playing on the same courts as all of the famous uh, tennis stars in the world today. So a really great perk of being part of the athletic program at CUNY. However, athletics aren't limited only to students who participate in our Division Three athletics. We do also offer a really robust intramural program um, so if there's a team or a sport that you're interested in, but you don't feel that you can make the time commitment to playing for the college team, um, you'll still be able to play with your friends and play um, other teams across campus as well as across the university. Um, and there are also uh, athletic classes, things like um, kickboxing and capoeira and yoga. Um, there are 5K runs sponsored by the campuses. Every campus has a gym that students are able to utilize. So um, regardless of the level of activity that you're interested in, it's available on our campuses. Um, similarly, clubs and uh, organizations are a huge part of life at our CUNY campuses. So we have over 1,800 student clubs and organizations. I know it's a lot, right? Should I say it again? 1,800. Um, and they encompass a lot of different things. Um, so it might be something like Model UN, it might be the Accounting Society, which is a great opportunity for students who are studying or interested in that area to get some real life experience. Um, we have groups like the Muslim Student Association. Um, we have fraternities and sororities at CUNY, so people often don't know that, but we do. Um, and we also have some um, more unique kinds of clubs and organizations, and students are allowed to create um, any club that interests them. So at Brooklyn College, we have a chicken parm club, where uh, a chicken cutlet club, where they 
go to the local um, restaurants and try the chicken parm every week. Um, they compare which place has the best chicken parm. Um, we have many campuses that have uh, Quidditch clubs, and actually our Macaulay Honors College team made it to the Quidditch World Cup, and we'll be playing in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina this April. So um, for all you Harry Potter fans, that's something that's widely available across CUNY. We also have really amazing career services, and they really span the gamut in terms of starting at your freshman year, and they will serve you even when you're an alumni of CUNY. Um, and we offer things like resume workshops and job fairs, um, aptitude kind of tests, so things like the Bloomberg where you get a chance to say, okay, here's the kinds of things I enjoy doing and here's what I think I'm good at and it helps to match you toward potential careers that you might enjoy in the future. Um, we have what's called professional development funding at a lot of our campuses that allows students to go to conferences that they feel would be helpful for them or to participate in unpaid internships um, and yet receive some funding. Um, we have places where students can borrow a suit, um, so you just don't have something to wear to your interview, and, and so that's a resource that's available at our career centers. Um, and then there's some sort of more soft skills, fun kinds of parts of it as well. For instance, um, golf etiquette and rules. So right, if you're worried that one day you'll be an executive forced out onto the golf course to network with your colleagues and you've never golfed before, you can learn that from our career centers too. Um, and then we also have students participating in a wide array of community service activities. So that might be things from um, having school supply drives for our local uh, New York City schools to a literacy day in a particular neighborhood. Um, students help to host conferences like the um, students at City College were helping to host a women's leadership summit. Um, we have students participating in Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Uh, and then we have an initiative across the university called CUNY Service Corps, which um, strives to have students participate in projects that help us to have a healthier city, a greener city, a better educated city, and an economically stronger city. So um, students are participating in all kinds of different projects. Um, to support those efforts. Uh, they're about 12 hour a week commitments and they do actually receive uh, $12 an hour pay for participating in that. So not only do they get to help serve the community, but it is also sort of a paid internship as well. So uh, it kind of spans across both those career services and community service opportunities at CUNY. We also have housing at a number of our campuses, and you see it listed on the slide. So Baruch, Brooklyn, City, College of Staten Island, Hunter, Lehman, and Queens now all have on-campus or campus-sponsored housing. Um, and many of our students also choose to live around our campuses in apartments or other um, shared living situations with other students. Uh, um, we do often in our student services offices on campus have ways to provide students with information about what kind of housing opportunities are available and to help students you know meet other students who might be interested in living together um, the facilities are really affordable and absolutely beautiful so um, you know if you go to the Queens College Summit or um, the dorms at City College you'll see um, flat screen TVs and washing machines that text you when your laundry is ready um, lots of really great things within those facilities. So um, if you're interested in housing, I encourage you to check it out. Um, we do not provide preference to students for housing depending on where they're coming from. So New York City students can live in our housing. Students from you know, far and wide can live in our housing. So um, it's an opportunity for everyone and um, it is a separate process once you're admitted to the college that then you also will apply for housing at that particular campus. So as a result of all these wonderful academic programs, student life, um, support, where do our graduates go? Lots of amazing places. Um, so you see some examples of colleges and schools where students are doing graduate work, places like the Albert Einstein Co uh, College of Medicine, Harvard Law School, Oxford University. Um, we also have students working at a variety of organizations across the city of New York, so um, places like Goldman Sachs, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the New York Times, um, and many, many more places. Um, so uh, there really are a lot of wonderful things that you can do 
once you start your educational career at CUNY. And uh, we have talked about our academics, we have talked about our incredible resources, our campuses, our location, uh, what our students do in the classroom and outside of the classroom, and also what we do to get you prepared to enter either the workforce or graduate school. And uh, one of our um, also wonderful features is our affordability. And on the screen you see what our um, tuition is for uh, this past fall, which really compared to college tuition across the country, uh, it is pretty reasonable. So our students are able to access a high quality education with an incredible um, set of resources and faculty at a really affordable price. Um, so that, uh, you know, we do understand that many of our students um, are coming from a wide range of backgrounds. So again, affordability is something that we, we want to maintain. Uh, New York State has a, one of the most generous state financial aid programs. So let me just talk a little bit about what different types of financial aids are available. Um, from the federal government, uh, our students are eligible for Pell, uh, which has a maximum award of $5,500 for the year. Um, we also have within the federal government a series of other grants and loans. Um, New York State has a tuition assistance program, which again is another grant, which means money that the student receives that does, they do not have to pay back. And the maximum award for a TAP is $5,000 a year. So for students who are eligible for the maximum awards in both Pell and TAP, they come to the university for free. Actually, over 60% of our undergraduate students, uh, between a combination of their financial aid awards and perhaps a merit base, come to the university for free. So not only is our full sticker price uh, an affordable choice, but many, many of our students come in uh, for free or paying very little out of pocket. And again, this is something that for us is extremely important because we do understand that it's not just about getting an undergraduate credential, but most of you are going to have to move on to graduate school. So we want to make sure that the, um, the funds that you utilize for your undergraduate education do not hamper your ambitions for graduate school. So again, we've shared with you a great deal of information and we know that at this point you're just starting your college search, but I do want to talk a little bit about how do you access all these wonderful um, opportunities here at the university. Um, we have very comprehensive information on our website, so I would encourage you to um, visit us at www.cuny.edu forward slash prepare. Uh, we have a, at the undergraduate level again, a single application that students will complete. With one application, students can select up to six college choices and they will hear uh, an admissions decision from every one of our colleges. Uh, in terms of the application review, um, we basically are looking at your high school credentials, what courses you've taken from the ninth grade through the 12th grade, focusing on the grades earned, particularly between ninth and 11th grade, because at the time that we begin reviewing applications, we don't have your mid-year senior grades available. Uh, we're interested in making sure that you have taken the most rigorous curriculum available to you. And uh, we compare your academics to other students in your school. We don't compare students from one high school to another. So um, if we don't get the information in your high school transcript, we will be looking at uh, the high school profile to get a better sense whether there were honors programs available or AP courses that, that students have taken. Uh, we obviously want to see an upward trend in your grades from ninth grade to 12th grade. And uh, although, as I mentioned, we do make admissions decisions often with just your ninth, 10th, and 11th grade, our expectation is that the end of your senior year will be equal or better than what you've presented to us before. So uh, senior year does matter as well. We also look at standardized test scores. Um, our four-year colleges require that students take either the SAT or the ACT. And uh, we don't look at the writing score for the SAT. We basically look at critical reading and mathematics. Um, we do what's called super scoring. Is uh, We take, for example, if you've taken the SAT more than once, we'll look at all of your scores. We'll take the highest critical reading score and we'll take the highest math score and use that as opposed to um, some other colleges that may be looking at your latest score or might do an average. So that is one question that you want to ask the colleges that are going to be on your list. How do they use the SAT or ACT? Uh, 
In addition, uh, we do encourage students to um, do well in their regions if they are in a school that offers the regions. So although the regions is not a requirement for admission, it is another um, credential that we look at to kind of see how well you've done in your high school. Uh, we also encourage students to submit a personal statement or essay. Um, for many of our colleges, it is an option, um, although for many of our selective programs, such as Macaulay Honors College, uh, Sophie Davis School of Biomedical Education, Engineering, Architecture, it is required that students submit either a, um, a personal statement or essay or um, do other type of additional work supplemental um, information. Uh, we then also encourage students to submit letters of recommendation, uh, and that should be from either a teacher or a counselor, someone who is going to provide us with a little bit more information about you as a student, because generally uh, when we look at a high school transcript or your standardized test scores, we're just looking at a, at a list of courses and options, so both your personal statement, essays, and your letters of recommendation allow us to um, see you, uh, meet you as a student. We do encourage students to visit our campuses. Uh, some of our programs do have interviews. Uh, and then again, that's going to be part of your search between now and uh, the beginning of your senior year to figure out what are some of the requirements for admission to our colleges. Uh, we have a couple of deadlines. And for uh, our first deadline for fall uh, is the Macaulay Honors College, which is December 1st. And our general freshman and transfer application deadlines for the fall um, are February 1st. So that is something that you want to keep in mind as you start planning your, um, your college list. Um, we begin uh, for, for the fall, uh, we begin sending out admissions decisions in February, although our application becomes live September 1st. So I would encourage you to, um, to really do some of your homework. And let me just talk a little bit about um, the timeline between now and perhaps this time during your senior year. And this primarily will be focused on juniors, although it's information that's helpful to high school freshmen and sophomores as well. So now you kind of are exploring your college search. You may have a long list of colleges that you might be interested in. Um, I generally advise students to have anywhere between 20 and 25 colleges on their initial list. And this means that these are colleges that you're going to start going onto their websites and getting information about. This certainly is not uh, certain, the, the number of colleges where you should be submitting applications to. Uh, it really is just kind of the first cut. Uh, between now and the end of the summer, uh, you really should have narrowed, I, it would be helpful to narrow that list down to perhaps between eight to 10 colleges, which basically will be the list of colleges that you intend to apply to. Um, as you're doing the search on their websites, um, I would also encourage you to look at their admission requirements. Most of us have a profile of what our students look like. Uh, again, it's information that's readily available. Talk to your college advisors um, or any person that is helping you with the college search. Uh, try and get in touch with the colleges so that you could come and visit. Um, we do spend a lot of time in taking the correct photographs for our publications and for our web, but there's nothing like walking onto the college campus so that you for yourself can experience what it will be like to be, or envision what it will be like to be a student at that campus. Um, I would also encourage you to look at the College Board website and look at the schedule uh, of dates for the SAT, uh, because uh, you are going to have to map out whether you will be taking the SAT once, twice, or perhaps three times. I generally recommend that students take it at least twice. But also, there are some selective institutions that uh, will require that you take the SAT subject test. And it is helpful if you take the SAT with the critical reading, writing, and mathematics in one administration and take any required subject test during another. Um, at CUNY, we do not require subject test, although if the student takes a subject test, some of our highly selective programs will um, we'll take that into consideration. Um, during the summer, uh, you should think about um, kind of starting your first draft of your college essay. And generally, um, July 1st or shortly thereafter, the Common App, which is an application that is used by, by a large number of colleges, um, over 500 colleges in the country, uh, releases their set of essay questions. And that's generally a good guide for you to start looking at topics. Um, also, for Macaulay Honors College, we generally have 
the questions for the Macaulay application available July 1st. So it really is a good time uh, to use part of your summer to get at least the first draft of your college essay ready so that when you start your senior year, you could then talk to your college advisor or your English teacher to kind of have them take a look at your essay and then have that done as early as possible. Also, by the time um, you come back in September, actually before you leave this year, if you're a high school junior, I would encourage you to think about who are the teachers that you would like to ask uh, to get a letter of recommendation. Uh, because it's always better to be among the first to ask the teacher as opposed to waiting for the last because he or she may feel that they have too many students that have asked them to be re to um, for them to write a letter of recommendation and again it just be good for you to at least um, get that done before you leave for your summer vacation uh, and that kind of in a, in a wrap-up way is uh, where you need to be uh, we certainly at CUNY uh, the CUNY Welcome Center is a place where you could get a lot of information about the university. We have colleagues across the university system who are happy to assist you, but one place where you could get information about all of our 19 undergraduate colleges is the CUNY Welcome Center. And on the screen, you see our telephone number, you have our email address, which is a help desk for students, and we also have a welcome center that um, sees students and families on a walk-in basis, and we're located in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, we do hope that this session has been informative. Um, at this point, we are going to um, open it up to questions, and we do have some questions available. And again, if you're not able to get the questions answered today, please do not hesitate to uh, either send us an email, give us a call, or come and visit us. Mrs. Martin? Yes. So um, to kick it off, we have a question um, saying, how do I find out about campus tours and open houses? I want to visit campus? Um, I would encourage you to go to the campus website. Each campus has an admission section on their website and on that they have scheduled um, events. You could also email the campuses and they'll be happy to send that information to you. Um, we do try and accommodate all of the requests that come in and our campuses really are within close proxemics to uh, each other so you might be able to set up more than one campus visit. Uh, so I would encourage you to try and do that. We certainly welcome you to visit us during the summer if that is more convenient for you, but we will have um, some general campus tours between now and the end of the summer, uh, between the end of this academic year. During the summer, we offer campus tours on a regular basis, and then in the fall, many of our colleges, in addition to having campus tours, offer information sessions and or open houses. So I certainly encourage you to visit the campuses because, again, it does give you an opportunity to get a better sense of what that campus is like. Also, if you have any relatives or any friends who are currently attending a CUNY campus, it might be good for you to make arrangements with them to visit the campus. I will encourage you, however, that if you come onto any one of our campuses with a friend uh, who is a current student, that you always stop by the admissions office and let us know that you're here. Um, but again, not only should you take advantage of those kind of regularly scheduled um, admission sessions and tours, but there are lots of other things going on on our campuses that are open to the public. So, um, you know, you can see our dance company um, do a presentation of their um, finals at the end of the semester, or you can come on campus and see what are our theater students doing. Um, so if you have an interest, you might also want to visit um, at a time when there is an event that is of particular interest to you. So Also, one more thing that I uh, just remembered, if, if you're interested in participating in any of our athletic activities, um, getting in touch with the coach is also a good way to come on campus. Uh, because you then will get a, a kind of a, a good sense of what the athletic program is and also they will facilitate a campus tour and getting to know other students on campus. So we have another question about scholarships saying what are the scholarship programs offered through CUNY and are they different for each CUNY school? Yes, they are different for each CUNY school and yes they're available throughout all of our colleges. Um, many of them use your general application as a way to invite students to scholarship programs, and many of them are also looking at the personal statement that students submit with their application. So again, another opportunity for you to, um, to help us get to know you better 
is by submitting the personal statement. But I would encourage you again to go onto the college website because every college offers um, some type of scholarships and there are some colleges that perhaps will not offer a scholarship when you first come in, but working with an advisor, uh, there is a wide range of other types of scholarships that are available to students coming in. Uh, we have recently launched a scholarship for students who are transferring from our community colleges into four of our four-year colleges. So um, if you are planning to start at one of our six, seven community colleges, um, the Gutman Scholarship is available for current undergraduate students at our community colleges who complete their associate's degree and then um, intend to transfer to four of our four-year colleges. So um, the scholarships are available as you come in as a freshman, but also there are some available if you decide to transfer from one school to another. Um, and again, if you're interested in learning more specifically about the Macaulay Honors College, which is a scholarship program as well as a fabulous academic program, um, they'll be doing a presentation during this event later this afternoon. So um, I encourage you to participate in that session as well to learn more about what they have to offer. Um, but what Richard was just talking about is a great um, sort of segue to one of our other questions, which is, um, someone wants to know if I started a community college, uh, then what do I do to transfer? <laughs> and he's decided he's talking too much, so I'll go with that one. Um, so first of all, what's really awesome about CUNY is that we have a shared general education requirement. So we call it pathways. And what that means for you as a student is that what you study in the beginning of your undergraduate career at any of our colleges is what you need to complete your degree at all of our colleges. Um, so you're going to pick courses in a variety of subject areas, um, things like, you know, English and math, but also the social sciences and foreign language and, and a number of other things, um, sciences. And you'll take courses in all of those areas, which again gives you an opportunity to explore more about what you might want to study. Also makes you a very well-rounded student, which is something um, that we believe is important. Um, and again, we'll prepare you for transfer to any of our institutions. So um, we always recommend to students that um, when you start at our community college that you complete your degree there and then transfer. Um, and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, one is that at the end of those first two years, you get a degree and a diploma, right? And students who are studying at four-year colleges don't get that at the end of two degree, uh, two years. So you, you don't want to miss out on that opportunity. Um, and then again, because you know that those credits are going to transfer, you know that you'll be in a position to continue on with your education across CUNY. Um, we do guarantee students who earn associate's degrees from our campuses that if they're interested then in going on to complete a four-year degree, that we will admit them to one of our four-year colleges. Um, so that's another benefit to completing that degree um, at the two-year campus. And um, we at the CUNY Welcome Center are happy to help students when they're ready for that process, that transfer process. It's very easy. Um, it's just an online application. And because you're a current CUNY student, there's no fee associated with that, which is great. Um, and there's also a transfer office on every campus that will help you um, to to know what you need to do to be able to complete your um, program at the community college and to be able to transfer successfully to the four-year college. So um, you will want to talk to your academic, academic advisor right from the beginning and say, you know, I know I'm going to want to go on and do a four-year degree, a bachelor's degree. Um, and if you know in what, you'll tell them in what, and they'll help to make sure that um, you follow the best course of study for you to be able to move on. In addition, um, we do have many students who transfer from one four-year school to another four-year school. So everything that Ms. Norton um, talked about also applies to those students. Um, and one more benefit of, of attending CUNY, and because we are an integrated university, we do have many students who are at one campus, but for whatever reason there's a particular course, there's a particular faculty or scholar that is giving a course at another campus. So our students have the ability to take a course at another campus without having to do a transfer. So again, that is one of the advantages that we have. Uh, one, that our colleges are all close to each other, but also that we are an integrated university system. Absolutely. Um, so we also have a few questions about academic programs. Um, so a few students asking about what kind of um, 
medical or medical prep kind of coursework is offered at CUNY um, and also asking about culinary arts. So um, we'll try to touch on those briefly. Okay, so one thing that I neglected to mention earlier when I was talking about our um, selective programs or programs for high achieving students uh, was our Sophie Davis School of Biomedical Education. So it's appropriate for me to bring that up now since you've asked the question about uh, medical programs. Uh, Sophie Davis School of Biomedical Education is uh, housed at the City College of New York and it is a program for, uh, it's a seven year BS MD program. Uh, and this is a program that is designed for students who know in their heart that they would like to be a general, uh, that they would like to be a, a doctor. So um, it allows students to go through the process from undergraduate education into medical school in a seamless way. Uh, we, most pre-med programs are looking for students kind of starting to explore medicine or wanting to think about, you know, pre-med and then start working, you know, kind of only with a small number of those students eventually going into medical school. Sophie Davis is actually quite unique because we want every single student that is admitted as a freshman and enrolls to at the end of seven years to be a medical doctor. Uh, so we guarantee admission into medical school because that's part of the application review process. And uh, the first year of medical school, uh, the student pays city college in-state tuition fees, which as I mentioned earlier, is a little bit under $6,000 a year, which is a bargain. Um, and also students do not need to take the MCAT. So it is really, again, a program designed for students who in their heart know that medical school and being a general practitioner is what they would like to do. There is a catch, however. Um, and uh, basically the catch is that students who are admitted into Sophie Davis and enroll have to make a commitment to work in an underserved area in New York State for between three and five years. Uh, and then once that commitment is done, then they're fine. So that really is the only catch. But um, if you're interested in medical school and you know that that is your passion, I would encourage you to look at um, at Sophie Davis. However, um, there are many students who medical school is one of the many options that they're considering. We do have a wide range of pre-med programs across the system. Hunter College, Brooklyn College, City College has very strong science programs. So um, again, our other options for our students and because of the number of hospitals and uh, research institutions located throughout the five boroughs, our faculty in the sciences are well connected with what medical schools are doing and what they're looking for. So we do have um, kind of a, a, an in with what the medical school professionals are looking for. So again, we really are um, a, a very good option for sciences. Um, however, there are another um, array of programs available. We offer nursing programs, community health programs. We just opened the School of Public Health um, in Harlem so that we really are looking at the wide range of health sciences opportunities. And again, I would encourage you to go onto our website to get the full list of what programs are available. And I know that we have four minutes left. Yeah, so, um, and the best place on our website to do that is cuny.edu forward slash explore. Um, that will give you an opportunity to explore all the different topics that we covered today, but um, does in particular list out the academic programs. Um, to quickly touch on the other couple of programs that some of you have asked about, um, culinary programs, we do offer those as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we in fact have a working restaurant um, at one of our campuses at Kingsborough Community College where students learn um, sort of the whole facet of a culinary arts. So not only about being in the kitchen, but also about the management of um, that kind of a facility. They get an opportunity to work in customer service, so it's a really um, very well-rounded program. New York City College of Technology, also very well known for their culinary program. Um, also a question about early childhood education, which is offered very broadly across the university. Um, the vast majority of our campuses offer a program in early childhood education, um, and we are also very well known for our master's in education programs. So um, as Richard was saying earlier, not only are you, you know, starting on a college search, but as you move on towards your career, you'll need additional education, and that's something that CUNY is able to offer. So for those of you interested in, in going into education, you will one day need a master's degree, and, and we offer um, all the way from the um, community college level through the PhD level for students to study 
um, in education and a variety of other subject areas. Well, we thank you for taking time to join us, and uh, we do wish you luck through the college search. Again, do not hesitate to call on us or email us or come and visit us, uh, because we really would love to show you our campuses, to introduce you to our students, and uh, hopefully help you with your college search. Um, enjoy the rest of your session here today, and thank you so much for joining us. And please visit our um, booth if you have additional questions. We'll be chatting there all day long, um, as well as a number of the other CUNY colleges are participating in the virtual fair. And again, there's also a presentation by the Macaulay Honors College later this afternoon, so we encourage you to participate in that as well. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.